This is a HeadGum Podcast. What do you prefer? Floor. What do you prefer? I don't, I don't care, and I've only done one of these, so I can't. Um, the couch was nice, but I haven't sat in the chair. But uh, it's up to you. I, when I offered John, Jonathan Hodgman, John Hodgman, yesterday, he said he enjoys a swivel chair, so he took the swivel uh, chair. I, I, if it's good enough for Hodge, <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's good enough for me. Um, thank you for doing this. Oh, too. thanks for having. Are you a podcast person? I've done people's podcasts. I don't. Yeah. I don't have one. It's not a civic obligation, David. Uh, that's where you're wrong. I This is much like jury duty. I got something in the mail, uh, and it said I it was my time to do a podcast, and I you know, went through... You can only turn it down twice, right? Yeah, you can turn it down twice, and I said, oh, I'm going to be uh, in Europe, and I can't do it. And so that was mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, I said, oh, I'm going to be in uh, Australia, and I can't do it. And then they said, well, you can Zoom it. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I find know. Zooming unsatisfying. I find it unsatisfying to listen to and look at. I and agree. Participate in. Uh, I had a fake. Well, that's why I wanted want to do these things in person. Oh, it's no, no, I much understand. Um, the, I had a fake podcast. Arden Mir- Mirren and I pretended we had a, part, a podcast called Pardon My Tangent. <laughs> Yeah. And so now I've taken it once. A, my, now I have a fake podcast called Pardon My Tangent, and there's been a murder. <laughs> but I've heard, I've look heard at you... that Karen Kilgariff. She's done pretty yeah. good with the murder. Oh, are you kidding? That's why I'm here. I mean, it's like I I can't, I don't want to look a gift horse in the gaping asshole, but hey. I think, uh, I think, I mean, this is what, to do now i will say this mm-hmm. i have uh uh come around on podcasts because uh when i had to do press for uh, uh the the special that i shot but had the tour was canceled uh, mm-hmm. due to covid and i did uh i'm from the future and i had to go promote that and you know back in the day it was all you do a couple to talk shows and then you do some kind of you know uh, AOL live type thing mm-hmm. and then a bunch of phoners and serious sit radio in chair tour. at the four seasons yeah you know you do all that stuff and and um and those most of those went away and it was a podcast for the first time mm-hmm. I went out and I did a bunch of podcasts and I really really enjoyed it and I yeah I thought it was uh whether it was somebody I knew or somebody I've, like yourself that I've known for uh, decades uh, or just somebody, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, this is a pretty popular podcast with, you know, 18 to 32 year old uh, Persians. And they're like, oh, great. All right. That's and uh, I don't know if Persian, you're allowed to say Persian anymore. Why? What happened? I don't know. I just read some somewhere that Patricia Arquette was uncomfortable saying that in True Romance. Uh, oh, is it, it true? I, oh, I, I didn't know I, that. I, I, did, I don't well, know. Well, what's the, what's the preferred... I, um, I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Or maybe she was just uncomfortable uh, saying that. I don't know. Maybe she has a, a, a speech impediment, and that's a word... That, no, she that said it. She did manage to say it in the film, vowels. and it sounded fine. Um, oh, but, I don't know. Well, I apologize if anybody took offense to that. I canceled. This has already been canceled. <laughs> but I, I find that uh, I do enjoy uh, some podcasts, and, I, and also... You tend to be a guest on podcasts so much it's like having a podcast. But yeah. I feel there's many, many podcasts. Uh, if I had something very interesting to bring to the table, I, I might rethink that. But I I don't. And I don't want to create content for the sake of creating content. And uh, I also feel the more you put yourself out there, the more you give people a reason to dislike you. Um, you know the phrase, you're your own worst critic? It's not true, David, <laughs> as it happens. Right. I say, I've said that a million times. And... I, I just feel like So who's your worst critic? Oh, there's many of them. There's um there a, a couple uh holdovers from the Iraq kerfuffle <laughs> who are still at it. But the um They're still at it. Still at it. But the <laughs> their, their blood their blood pressure hasn't uh Well they've made you would think succumb. they they've aged with me. You know, you'd think they <laughs> right. and they were older than me then. So right. 
but they're still they're still at it. Just but, every morning they're waking up going, God damn, yeah, Janine, yeah, Janine Garofalo. Garofalo. It's like saying Susquehanna Hat Company. <laughs> every day. Susquehanna Hat Company. <laughs> Slowly I, I turn. turn. <laughs> but I, I also, some podcasts, though, it, there has been times intermittently where I don't understand what we're doing here. You know what I mean? Like there seems yeah. to be no there there. There seems to be. And then it, it goes on and on and on. And I don't even know what could be edited together. And then there's times when it's done live, mm -hmm. which is a very long process. That's a lot to ask of people, especially if, if there's too many guests on, sometimes live. You and mean uh, like not, a show, like yeah, at the like town when they, hall There was or an whatever. existing podcast yeah. and then it's done live at, yeah. say, uh, Moon Tower Festival, what have yeah. you. And uh, too many guests all trying to talk over each other or anything like that. And sometimes they're very interesting. I'm, I'm not a, a naysayer about podcasts in general, but I do think like anything, it's case by case. But people love them. Yes, they do. And I watched uh, the Smartless Netflix mm -hmm. series and uh, very, and I had not listened to it before, but I knew I li would like to see those guys do that. Mm -hmm. And it was just as, they themselves are just as enjoyable. And you uh, also they're being authentic. You see their relationship. Yeah. And um, I've always been a, a huge Will Arnett uh, Jason Booster. Bateman, uh, fan, and of course, uh, Sean, Sean Hayes. I mm -hmm. I like him very much too, and um, I don't. It's isn't it something that Sean is always the afterthought. I don't. No, no, no. What I was going to say is I don't know him personally. I like him. I've I, I've I met like him a couple him, times. He's yeah. awesome. He, he's yeah. very cool. I've had dinner with uh, those guys mm -hmm. a bunch, and uh, um, but it's always <laughs> Jason and Will. Comma, oh, it wasn't and, an afterthought. Ampersand wasn't an afterthought Sean in any way. It's just that Jason and Will I have been lucky enough to have met. Right. And uh, I did actually, Sean Hayes, and he would probably never remember this, many years ago, we did a sketch on a Penn and Teller, a short-lived Penn and Teller mm -hmm. show together, and I accidentally shot him in the eye with an air gun. Jeez. And the- Ow, I was wait, really? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Well, they had a, a, a thing and they severe. said, uh, just pull the trigger. And um, I guess a p the puff of air hit his eye very oh, hard. Ouch. And this it, is yeah, pre-rust. Pre this, yes. And listen, I don't want to drag. I, I feel a lot of compassion for uh, everybody involved, but I do I do uh, feel that Alec Baldwin is really being raked over the coals yeah, and seems sued like it. unnecessarily. Seems, and seems the New like York it. Post, as usual, delights in every yeah, second yeah, yeah. of it. And uh, I, I do feel that... Uh, it, it must have taken a huge toll on everybody involved's life, but I do feel there uh, he is not ultimately the one responsible for no, whatever no, I, happened. Absolutely, and uh, I, and it's it's odd that it it you know I I have sympathy and for for him and he's a person I don't I never oh, did I have any. I actually always have liked him a great deal too. He's always been very very yeah. nice to me, and it's not one of the things like well he's nice to me. But I, he, he's, I've seen him, when he hosted SNL when I was on it, that was one of the greatest times I ever had doing anything. He couldn't have been funnier, couldn't have been better at it, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just a joy. And then I did a movie with him called Thickest Thieves, and again, incredibly nice to me, and funny and fun. Um, I, I, I've, uh, well, that's great. I've, I've heard the opposite uh, from people who've worked with him. Well, that's that one of those things where you, we all have, uh, could probably... Uh, find people who will say that about us. Uh, I, I don't, you know what I mean? It's I, I, and I, again, I don't like that kind of thing. Like, I don't care what this person does. He's nice to me. I don't believe right. in that. Uh, I don't have mm -hmm. that feeling. What I'm saying is, is for this rust situation, unbelievably uh, I'm with tragic. You. Uh, yes, and awful. And I don't, yeah, I've only I don't seen think he's him be nice. And we use on Larry Sanders. Yeah. Very kind, nice, very talented. And uh, that's my experience with him. And uh, also, he's got about 750 new children, all under the age of seven. Mm -hmm. uh, his wife seems very fertile. Yeah, so well, they're Orthodox Jews, so apparently, well, yeah. something uh, or or like the Duggars, yeah. in that you just er another the religious movement, extremist, any kind yeah. of religious populate, extremist. Populate, 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 exactly. Be fruitful and multiply. Wombs be damned. Quality yeah. of life issues be damned. But I I do feel like uh, the stress that has affected anyone involved with this over the last number of years. And it's not over. The, yeah. the lawsuits will keep coming. And, uh, cause I'm sure there's plenty of craven people who think if there's money to be made off this, they sure. will do it. Uh, absolutely. But moving on from that topic. Yeah. 
go ahead. You shot it's Sean your po- Hayes. It's your podcast. It is. It is. Um, Janine, what yes, is... Uh, <laughs> what is... Uh, actually, I'll start off with this, which I've been mm-hmm. asking uh, everybody. Oh, have we started? It started. Oh, yeah. We started, started when we walked I figured, in the room. I was talking to the mic just in case. I figured, yeah. I figured we started. Um, tell everybody... Uh, the first time about the first time we met. Well, uh, it may. This is my recollection of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I met you uh, through either Laura Keitlinger or the stand-up scene. I'm not positive which one or the cave. Which one? But you were still at Emerson. I was still at Providence College. You had just been asked to leave Emerson <laughs> shortly. Be- shortly before we met. I thought it's because you were trying to steal a mailbox, but you told me fairly recently that's not what it was about. No, well, you're conflating a couple things. We It wasn't a mailbox. It was a USA Today newspaper right. uh, machine, which we actually got very close to like a block away from the dorm. Then the cops came and then we left it there because it's heavy as shit, man. The fucking, right. <laughs> those things are heavy. And, uh, and then they left and we... Waited half an hour and just went back and got it and finished was the that, walk it, up because the, because it was essential to have that in your in your home. You you really want you're going to use it for like shelving or storage space. Or, well, uh, I wanted to save the money that each uh, issue of the paper cost. Yeah, but if it's in your apartment, you're not getting new issues. You would right. only have well, the that's, issues that, that are, I found out. I found that out later. I thought very, they would just clever, figure fella. it out feel, on the I roof. I feel you would know that. You, they, were, you were drunk, I presume. Oh, for the entire eighties, right? Uh, but I was, yeah. It's uh, I find it difficult to believe and that 90s. you would think that. Boy, am I say there's going to be new papers every day in this in this contraption that I've now taken like a magical. And no, I'll save I expected so much somebody money. to. They would say, "Oh, the newspaper box. Uh, where did it go?" And then mm-hmm. they would uh, consult the tracker, and then they go, "Oh, it's at and, oh, it's at David's th- place. It's at three eighty five Beacon Street." I'll just deliver all the papers there. Yeah. Okay. Not all the papers, but the papers for the machine would go in there, right. and then when the guy left Mr. or Cross, woman, whoever Mr. it is, Mr. Cross, I'm here for the papers. <laughs> Wake up! You sleep so late. Use all you guys are sleeping so late because. <laughs> I don't get it with the college kids anymore. Listen, in oh. my day, you didn't sleep you'd past seven. You'd get up seven. at 5 a.m., you'd make an egg sandwich, you'd eat a brick of cheese, and you'd go to work and you, you wouldn't complain. Your donkey. That's still the same. You get your di- donkey from the Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yes, because we were in, in Boston. Boston, yes. Yeah. You yeah. get your, dun- your donkey. Um, yeah, I think it was through Laura. I wanted, Laura, uh, Keitlinger. Laura Keitlinger. Fantastic and then. Uh, yep, um, uh, one of the greats, and uh, and then of course just the continuing in the scene, right? Um, that you helped uh, uh, put an I uh, philosophy to, and I uh, did. That's you that's did. giving you me did, uh, too no, much credit. It's just, that that's not, very kind when people no, say that, but it's I bullshit. I didn't. It, Janine, you David? did. You continued to do it when you went to L.A. Uh, I were, no, you're not getting an award. You're not getting. I don't, a, no, I'm not. I'm just saying that. But I, it's true. I, I mean, just I do, stop. I, it's true. It is okay. absolutely true. And if enough of us, meaning all of us, oh, that, there's say nothing it, more powerful than a fixed idea. People, and, oh, and even please. if it's in, in that's your, a fixed idea is what you're demonstrating. You're demonstrating was, a fixed idea that you had dare, didn't have how anything. How dare you <laughs> accuse me? Of having a fixed idea after I have just said that you have a fixed idea. Anyway, but there's another part of thing that I'm not quite sure of. Like when you came to Los Angeles uh, for the Ben Stiller show. Now, I mm-hmm. think we had started. And did I tell Judd about you? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then Judd read a sample? Uh, yes, I had. Uh, I was hanging out with you. I'd come out to L.A. You were. You had moved out there. I think you were. Were you doing something with Dennis Miller or something at that point? Or um, I, th- I did, I would, I did stand up on his show. I might have done a failed pilot with him or something. I don't yeah. recall. But uh, Jimmy Miller, his brother, right, was helping me. I think out. that maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But you, you had just been to LA and things were going really well for mm-hmm. you. Um, and I came out to, uh, I mean, crash at your place and and just uh, you know hang out. And, and the earthquake for and the earthquake for the, the Whittier for the earthquake, Whittier earthquake that's right which you ran past me I, I was on the couch. Wake up. 
David, right through that. David, get up. This is real quick. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and you were in your uh, Little Mermaid PJs, nightgown, and then uh, and then. Was I? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I was going to say, I don't think they had the Little Mermaid then. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I remember vividly that my dream was that people were uh, shaking, shaking the couch and I was laughing and I was like, ha and I kind of woke up laughing until you were ran by going, get up, it's an earthquake. <laughs> and, um, and then I was, oh, wait, what? And then it was kind of over fairly right. quickly. But it was what I learned later was a rolling earthquake, yeah. which was fun. And then I remember thinking and believing for a long time, uh, earthquakes are fun. Until the Northridge Until earthquake. the Northridge, which was Not one fun. of the scariest, yeah. aw most awful, upsetting things. After a night at Luna Park. And I was still, uh, it was a Sunday night at Luna Park, oh Bethel Peters. And I was still, I was just had rolled in late night, intoxicated, mm -hmm. yep. had just, I think, just laid on the floor to like watch TV or something. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, here we go. But I was very pleased that I was still dressed. And yeah, nice. And the very next day, though, that morning, I had to leave to fly to, um, and there were still flights oh, leaving. Oh, God, you're so lucky that you didn't have to go through all the aftershocks. Well, and, as a, and as it, oh. <laughs> listen to this, though. Uh, and this is uh, it's going to sound exaggerated. This, this is true. As I walked outside to go to the airport, my car had been stolen that night. Just coincidentally. Wow. That that the my Geo Metro, and that's the I, maybe you remember this story. But when the cops found it, a, a police officer called and said, "We think we found your car." Uh, there was a of number of, of cassettes. <laughs> uh, can you identify? He said, "Mind bomb." V V. <laughs> 10,000 maniacs. Uh, and, then, and it was a uh, script to the bridge. Like he was reading it, but <laughs> right. when he said mind bomb, V V. From, from the, the, yeah, I was right. like, that's my, yeah, that's my car, that's my car. And it had been just like, apparently the Geo Metro was oft a frequently and easy to steal car. Mm -hmm. I had just got it, but that was one of those things. So then I... Um, I had my uh, car stolen in LA too. Right yeah, just a, On Franklin, right... Yep. Uh, behind uh, La Poubelle. It happens all the yep. time. Mugged and car stolen. It's just, it's now these days here, like like many of you, I've been hit by a bike thrice fold. Yes, you get hit by a bike all the time in New York now. Here, just... I, uh, twice, but um, no, I, I messed up a finger, but nothing major. Well, it's just merely annoying, uh, yeah. but it happens all the time and it's quite dangerous because the bike is not stopping. The bikes are not yeah, stopping. Yeah, and now you got the e-bikes. The e-bikes is tearing down. You can't hear them and they go in 25 miles an hour. I know. Why not? Listen, and you can't David, hear them. Listen, last, uh, I don't know why I'm still doing an accent. Last, uh, the November before last, I got hit by a car, which was exciting. Oh, I didn't know that. It was fresh. Did I know that? Novel, unexpected. Shit. I don't know. But getting hit by a bike is just, is really irritating. But in get, I feel that getting hit by a car means something. By yeah. getting hit by a bike, um, it's, it's kind of the difference. It's like an episode between, of Law and Order. It happens every day. <laughs> yeah, to everyone. Um, I would say that the Northridge earthquake was one of the loudest things I've ever heard. It sounded like a train. And it was, yeah. it was, and creaking and screeching mm -hmm. and like metal on metal, and uh, that combined with all the transformers exploding right. and stuff. Um, which brings me to this question, because the name of the podcast is Senses Working, Working Overtime. Over time. What is uh Yeah, they I couldn't afford the rights of the music, but oh. um, I think we're going to have Rivers do the music. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, what is the loudest thing you've ever heard? Um, gosh. I, the loudest thing... I wasn't prepared for some reason for that, the herd, because I, I thought it was going to be like best, worst you've ever heard. Because oh, I, I, I can, in my I can, mind, I had. I can do that. But I don't want to. I, I can do that. It's fine. Okay. And we can snip around and okay. uh, uh, no worries. I don't, I, I don't, I'm, this isn't about surprising. No, and no, all no. That I wasn't that. It's yeah. just for some reason in my mind, I had the question might be involving what's best or worst thing you've mm -hmm. ever heard, but loudest thing I, I've ever heard. Um, gosh, there's probably been several things, but. That earthquake was quite loud, but um, oh, manhole cover exploding right outside uh, oh, where shit. I live in New York was uh, uh, unbelievably loud and wow. uh, and jarring. And it was like at 
five or six in the morning and and Pete and I happened to be awake because we some, do that and I was making a beaded necklace. And um, I keep forgetting you're 82. I, I know. Well, beads are for all. They're the young, the old. Uh, I think just the young and just and the old. And this was, I was younger then. I was actually only like 42 making that when this happened. But it was, and then not only that, but it hit a window oh and then gosh. must have bounced and then hit the street again. So it was in a, in a quiet Wait, is echoey. this pre-9-11 or post-9-11? Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, gosh, I don't remember. If I was 42, let's see, in 2001. So pre-9-11. Uh, probably right yeah. around there. But I, I mean, remember. everything ch after 9-11, all the little things like that were just completely ramped up right. for years. But this for... would have been in any context. Right, sure. Um, I And I like to just stick with 1911, 9-11, 1973, when Salvador Allende was oh, assassinated. That and and right. uh, Augusto Pinochet was installed with the help of the CIA. That never forget. What about Seven Eleven in London? Seven Eleven. Uh, oh, they have Seven Elevens. Uh, they do, but that's not what I'm talking about. They have a uh, Seven uh, Eleven is when there was a terrorist uh, attack. Oh, <clears throat> right. In London, I so. didn't know they called it Seven Eleven. It seems like they would call it Eleven Seven. Uh, oh, because they do it backwards. Yeah. It so was, uh, it, it was on no. It was. Yeah. I see. It is already backwards. I don't know. Uh, you don't know. Do you? Don't, Nicole, you don't look it up. Look it up. And Nicole. also, it seems like we're being glib. <laughs> we're glad we're not being glib about this. Um, and what with the queen? I feel. I still feel terrible about the queen, but she got into a deathbed. That that is her first and last. Don't get into a deathbed. Yeah, I say this all the time. Yeah, there's so many mattresses now, David. <laughs> Purple. They come in boxes. Casper. Yeah, yeah. Casper no need yeah. to get into a deathbed because. Look, if it's comfortable, you it's comfortable. You shan't get out. And, you know, it's, this is Are a lady who was though? a- Are they Well, we'll never know. Queen gets know? into a deathbed. She was around for so long. Yeah. It was, it, nobody saw it coming. It was just no, so not at sudden all. and it's shocking. No, not at all. It's a huge, least of all, Charles. Yeah. Um, who, some and say- And that Meghan Markle. <laughs> oh, from Suits. The queen hated Suits. Um, oh, sorry. So the loudest thing. Yes, that's the loudest thing. That continue, sounds- Please continue. That sounds- that was loud. I didn't even think of that until you just brought it up. And did you see any of it or you just heard no, it no, no, and then no, found it out later? It became clear. We rushed to the window oh, and it became clear uh, right after that. And and the dogs were, got oh, very upset. And uh, in looking at what happened and then a few people who were, you, you heard the crash and then you could see a manhole cover that was... There, You're where it able, ought I can't do the not sound to have the, been, like when you spin a quarter and it takes. It didn't. Like a it just thudded down because it was it's so heavy. Oh, but it was very, very hot, and the steam obviously was accruing underneath it, and just that's crazy that there was be the pressure would build up enough to. It happens. I mean, when you whenever I see steam coming out of those manhole covers, I I I am a yeah, little wary all sure. the time because eventually it's just physics, I guess. Is it physics? Uh, it the, that kind of pressure, it will just. But shouldn't they have something to alleviate their pressure? So well, they do. Some... They have holes in the manhole right. cover. So but what I happened? Guess what was the issue? There might have been uh, uh, perhaps a fire mm. also adding to go. it in the subway system. I'm just speculating. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if you were standing on that? that I know. Thank God it was like five, five-ish Finkel in the morning, about five in the morning or around that area. Because the, uh, And I'm sure it has happened where people have been gravely injured, if not fatally injured, by mm. that very thing. Yeah, that's that's scary. And, uh, yet I'll another say. reason for people to stay away from New York City uh, and the hellscape it's become. You're just if, saying that because you want it all to yourself. I do, no, I'm saying that because I only watch Fox News and oh right, and, and they will show Newsmax. flooding footage over the same footage over and again, the, the, uh, over again, so that your parents will be yeah. alarmed on your behalf, even though it's nowhere. And I I was shocked at what uh, that. Uh, Black Lives Matter was responsible for the flooding and for the torrential rains. Well, Fox Net says yeah, it, uh, and it was, and that weather machine. Yeah, yeah. The Jews, the Jews control the Pelosi. weather. Pelosi. Um, okay, so uh, you were prepared to answer this. So, what is the best thing you've ever heard? Okay, well, I the answer to that. Uh, am I allowed to elaborate as to why? Uh, of course. Just, okay, it has to do with uh, two different pieces of music. Okay, and why. The first one 
is uh, when I arrived at Providence College, unfortunately, a day early cause for orientation, because I lived f- far from Providence College, and most of the kids who went to Providence College lived near, so they were going to arrive day of orientation. Mm-hmm. So I And you had come from Houston? Texas, so. yeah. And Tejas. Un- Tejas, unfortunately. <laughs> and so my dad and brother dropped me off, and then they left, and... Uh, my stuff had not arrived, UPS, but I was in the dorm. There was a, a handful of other kids, but basically, and I already sensed I've made a big mistake coming to Providence College, which I did. It's, it was not right. For, had had not you a scouted good fit. it or anything? No, beforehand? it was the only college that accepted me. Hmm. Um, That's why so I, was I in had Everson. to go. And uh, I slept on a bunk with no sheets, and th- none of this is a hardship. That's that's fine. But it's that kind of sense of ennui you have, that feeling of. I feel kind of lonely. I feel a little scared. I don't know what's coming. And, and it's a big t- t- deal. You are now an adult. You're out of home. Right, right. You're, and and that, you're alone. There's, there's things to be pleased about with that too. I, sure. I'm not sentimental about my dad and brother leaving. You know, I was looking forward to. I, no, I totally get. I, I think everybody can relate to that feeling of like it's a new chapter. It's right. exciting. It's it's, uh, uh, you know. Uh, a little daunting, mm-hmm. and and it's it's all those things. But luckily, I did have um, that I was because in those days you could carry quite a bit. I had in the suitcase on the plane that that, mm-hmm. and in that like a radio mm-hmm. thing you could pl- a clock radio that I could plug in. I know what a radio and, is. Uh, and well, for younger <laughs> viewers, I was going to say listeners, uh, I found W. BRU, Brown University's yeah. station. Sure. And a song, the first song that came on was Numbers with Wings by the Bongos. And it's what's considered back then college radio, then was indie music and then alternative music, but, you know, left of the dial. Yeah. And it just, if you're open to it, if you have taste, I'd like to think, you you hear music that's different than what the the mainstream that you, when you're growing up in the suburbs, whatever you tend to, back in those days of terrestrial radio, mm-hmm. you are told now that it started to change a little bit with MTV because they didn't have a lot of content. So they had a lot of left of center videos back then. Mm-hmm. And I started hearing and seeing like, I like this, whatever this different thing is, I like it. And all the programming on that night, all night long, I one song after the other, after the other, I was like, this is great. This is great. This is great. This is changing me. Mm-hmm. And... Luckily, uh, in Rhode Island and Boston at that time, there was no end of venues for all of these bands that you were hearing uh, may I to see. I have said, and I think about it every once in a while, how insanely lucky I was to go from the Atlanta Athens music scene to Which is the good. Boston the Athens music scene. Music scene was has always traditionally been quite good. Athens, yeah, GA, yeah. inside but, out. But but I mean uh, to go from there to Boston. Oh, and you're saying that you, one I, to the other. I've just been amazingly lucky, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then going to L.A. for that mm-hmm. the music that was coming out then, and then going to New York for mm-hmm. you know uh, Strokes, yeah, 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 right. uh, uh, you know. Um, well, all of that, and there's always time. Good music is always there. It's so always there. I, I just didn't know when I was younger to go to the left of the dial to look to right. look for it, and I didn't know Drew University because I my in New Jersey where I mainly grew up before I went to Texas. Uh, my Would neighborhood you, could sort you of say abutted, Tejas, please. Tejas, my neighborhood sort of abutted Drew University. I'm sure they had a radio station. I didn't right. know in my right. clock radio to look for it. And my older siblings were very much into whatever was the the albums everybody's older siblings had. Yeah. Right? That's not blanket bad. You know, there's certainly that's no, fine things yeah. within that. But there's something about if you if your ear if it catches your ear. And so it's also not about doing the lyrics well, too. And it's the about attitude. The lyrics, right. The lyrics, attitude is completely different than Right. There's 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 more thought put into it. And it's just different. Well, it also speaks to Something different. I mean, right. as opposed to Def Leppard and Brian Adams. Which and... I'll tell you, I love photographing animals. I'm not, I'm not, no, but, uh, I'm not <laughs> knocking that. And they at seem all. nice. They kept the drummer, the one armed guy. But the, <laughs> so anyway, that opened up something within me that at that night. And are you, at, uh, as that, that was, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt here. But, are you, you're not denigrating uh, Metallica for not at ditching all. the dead guy. No. Okay. Why are you dragging Metallica into this? Because you said uh, the Def curly Leopard was guy nice. Was very nice to my dog once. No, no, no. I was like the Def Leppard because they seem nice. They because waited they, for that drummer with the arm. Yeah. 
And but the but Metallica moved on after their hey, bassist died. To each his own. <laughs> okay. <All laughs> to right. each their own. I thought you were now, casting. Why would I, I didn't say anything about Metallica? So save your letters. Do people still write letters? <laughs> Don't write in. I I like Metallica. They they're very talented and good. I like them. Well, yeah, me too. Uh, Any hoozle. So that. Uh, because then I I had basically no friends. Well, it didn't work out for me at Robbins College at all. But what did work out was seeing these bands, meeting communities through those bands uh, that you could see in these live venues. And also um, the connection of, of comedy, too. Like the, mm-hmm. that, that was, uh, and I'm very grateful for it because of how miserable it was how, how badly it went for me at, at college. Yeah. And then uh, the summer before my senior year, I was in Somerville and I was, cause I wanted to be there doing open mics and stuff cause I had started doing stand up my junior year. Mm-hmm. And I was in Somerville with about three or four other roommates <laughs> sleeping on a floor. And again, just really, I'd been fired from the BU bookstore. I'd uh, been fired from for what that oh uh, just b- being stupid just i don't know just so I kept getting fired. no i i'm very unintelligent in a lot of ways i i do i can't seem to follow simple rules like i i i'm not a quick learner in any uh, whatever it is i get got fired a lot i'm not proud of that but uh and i was just up low feeling bad and on wfnx a song by a band called the Blue Nile, which I had not heard of prior to that Scottish band, and the song Tinsel Town in the Rain. To this day, that moves me. Mm-hmm. That song, that night, it's just one of those things that the, at night when it's like 4 a.m., you're just, mm-hmm. you can't, some, it feels wrong, it feels, something feels bad. This song, again, through a clock radio, was, made me just feel like that, just it just lifted my spirits. It just was beautiful. It almost brought tears to my eyes. And I've been a a since then a lifelong Blue Nile fan, and I can still hear that song today, Tinsel Town in the Rain, and feel the exact same way. Mm-hmm. And that again is the beauty of music like that, or anything outside the norm. Mm-hmm. And it's always shocking to me when people are not moved by music really one way or the other. Like I, it's yeah, it's that's neither uh, here nor I, there to I, them. I, that one just does not compute with me. But yeah, there are plenty just, of people who are yeah, like... Yeah, it's just one of those things. They literally say, I don't like music. I don't care or for music. Or there hasn't been any good music since. Uh, whatever, well, that's, whatever that that's is. Ignorance that, that's a whole other yeah, nonsense thing. thing. But there's a lot of people who uh, are not moved by music one way or the other, yeah. or their taste in music to me is like, I cannot understand this. And you're paying money to see this person live. They're not even really singing that much. The lyrics are not clever. I don't understand what's moving you about this music or why you care so little about what goes in your ear uh, in that way. But anyway, that was a very long-winded answer for that one. So. No, no, that's uh, I, I appreciate it, and it, it can be as long-winded and you know descriptive and thoughtful as, as you want. Hey, folks, FrameBridge makes it easy and affordable to custom frame just about anything. And we have! FrameBridge is fast. We ship your finished frame directly to your house in days. And FrameBridge pricing is fair and transparent. Pricing is based simply upon the size of your piece, and you know exactly what you'll pay up front. FrameBridge uses the highest quality materials and every one-of-a-kind frame is handcrafted by hands. We have a happiness guarantee. If you're not 100% happy with your piece for any reason, we'll make it right. Of course, happiness is subjective, but whatever. FrameBridge has framed over 2 million pieces and counting. And I'll tell you what, this is for real. I want to say about 7 or 8 of them are in my house because I've used FrameBridge uh, multiple times, and they really are good. Anyway, FrameBridge has a curated selection of frame styles and design experts to make it fun and easy to choose the perfect frame for your piece. FrameBridge has a growing list of stores popping up all over America. We started online, but now have 21 retail stores in New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, Chicago, and Atlanta. When you visit a store, you can get one-on-one expert design advice and see our collection of frame styles in person. Visit framebridge.com to custom frame just about anything. 
Here's how it works. Order online at framebridge.com, and you can either upload a digital photo for us to print and frame, or mail us your art. We'll mail you free, secure, prepaid packaging to mail us back your art. I really have used Framebridge a lot, and they're, they're actually really good. <laughs> Here's your code for your free order, Senses2024. You can redeem at framebridge.com, Senses2024. Visit framebridge.com to custom frame just about anything, not my penis. Um, you know, I distinctly remember uh, specific times when I first heard something that made me stop and go, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. I remember first hearing Oh Superman mm -hmm. uh, by Laurie Anderson when, mm -hmm. uh, what was her name? Saxon Brown was in my acting class at uh, Northside High School in, in Atlanta and she had we had been rehearsing or something and um and she drove me home and she, we were like in a uh my in front of my apartment building and it was on you know again it was a uh, uh I think WRAS um um Georgia State Radio uh, College Radio where I you know that and uh, Georgia Tech uh, w R E K. I got all my music, you know, cool music stuff from, and uh, and I was like, and she didn't, she wasn't really listening. I was like, stop, stop, don't turn off the car, hang on. And I, you know, it's a long song, but I was like, what the fuck? I have mm -hmm. to know who this is. I have to know what this is. Um, and then ultimately later, I saw her in uh, live in in Atlanta at the Peachtree Playhouse, and uh, I would. I would put it as one of the five things that changed my life mm -hmm. that sent it into a different direction, opening the ideas of what can and can't be done on stage and mm -hmm. what a performance is. And uh, um, just amazing. I'll never forget it. And I had severe allergies and it was in the summer and I was at the top of the the Peachtree Playhouse, I don't even know if it's there anymore, but it was an old theater, uh, turn of the century, and uh, no air conditioning or anything. This is in Atlanta in the summer. And I was, I was just like dripping, yeah. you know, the, I was like this the whole time. And I really wanted to leave, but I couldn't. It was so, uh -huh. uh, I mean, mesmerizing and, and brilliant. Um, so you were in the theater. It was hot. You had no, allergies. no. That's it. That's all. Just oh, that it was okay. an amazing. Uh, just I was so miserable physically. But it and, it, may, it changed that. Uh, the sounds and the what, well, you were what saying she was doing that. was was I'd never seen anything. I mm -hmm. not even that I hadn't seen anything. I just said it didn't occur to me that you could do like she had this one thing. So you know those uh, little they're kind of like mylar strips, and you they'll be like on a balloon or a greeting card mm -hmm. and if you rub your thumb over them it's like hi how are you whatever it's uh -huh. like a i don't know what you call it but it's like a little thing where they capture audio and if you kind yeah. of rub it so she had a long strip on the ground and a door and a door frame by itself just mm -hmm. on there and she had uh she had something on the, the bottom of the door so that when she opened and closed the door it was like this whole like three sentence thing and yeah. then she was using almost like a you know this with the with the with the, with the DJ. With oh, the, like the scratching. Scratching, like that, yeah. It's almost like you, scratching. Yeah. Like, and this is 1982. I want to mm -hmm. say so. Uh, I mean, it was just like, just I was like, what the? F that's brilliant. And mm -hmm. it was something that it wasn't like technology. I was like, oh yeah, right. that's that thing on mm -hmm. the when you get a greeting card and you open it up and it goes, right. hi, I love you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, oh my god, that's brilliant. What a cool thing to do. And uh, there was lots of that in her show. And um, I want to go back, and I and I apologize for jumping Fine. so far back, but I want to clarify something. It was about because uh, we the we the earth earthquake sent us off this other direction, mm -hmm. but so I had come out to L.A. Oh, right. uh, to hang out with you and just to see L.A. and mm -hmm. and get a feel for the comedy scene and all that, and just also to you know hang out and visit my friend and. Uh, um, and you and me and Ben Stiller went to the Snake Pit, which was the only. Right. I, and I, I had such an attitude about LA. I was like, "Fuck uh -huh. this place! I hate it." And I, 
the Snake Pit was the only, it was on Melrose, and was the only yeah. bar that was not a douche bar, right? Which was not true. Uh, that in your because there was there bars that are not that you could walk to. Oh, that you could walk yeah, to yeah, for sorry. sure. No, no, unless of you course. want to walk to the Coach and Horses, which you could. Oh, or the I don't think we knew about the Coach and, and Horses. And I used to yet. ride my bike uh, to the Formosa with Miss Pam Siegel, now Pamela Adlon, because of drunk driving issues. So, <laughs> drunk <laughs> rider bike, drunks, drunks, drunk bikers, drunk bikes. But uh, yeah, that. I didn't love the snake pit, but it was literally one block from where I was staying. It, yes, I, I I should uh, clarify that in uh, as nice far as walking, mm -hmm. it was the only because Melrose was chock full of uh, bars and clubby things, and it was the only one that was felt like a yeah real bar, and I was that was very much my you know annoying East Coast attitude. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we so I hung out with you and Ben. And then, uh, and we had a, you know, good time and had some drinks and stuff. And then, uh, um, uh, and then when you were on the Stiller show and I was in Boston, uh, pretty miserable and really at my, kind of the end of my rope of, uh, like, I was just sick of being poor. And, uh, and it was my own because I just didn't, you know, I was just working doing stand up and getting you know money's under the table and mm -hmm. i lived with uh four other guys were you ever at that apartment the one that uh brian fraser called the uh the loser museum <laughs> i'm not sure i mean i had been at your apartment the one uh, it was the last one i lived in it was in uh, uh or not the last the one, one second with, to last or, you lived with waterman and uh carl perry yes yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yeah. I was there because you remember yeah. what happened with Carl Perry. He said, "Do oh you ever gosh, shut up right. to me?" Oh, with the He's knife. Like, Will you stop talking? Um, oh uh, no, I got. I went and got a knife. I slept right, with yeah, a knife. He was very upset with me. Well, it was also that that weird kind of like his eyes were oh, kind no, of up it, it in the back a, of the head, and, and it terrifying. And it was a guttural like, "What you shut the fuck?" You know, yeah, like, "Oh my have, god." People have mentioned that I am pretty chat. I mean, that that happens has happened. Dude, my that friend wasn't, that was in high school, Jim Barry would say, "I will pay you five dollars if you stop talking right now." Stop we talking. all, Dave, D uh, Chris, I wasn't Christino, talking at Waterman. that time that no. loud. I think it was. People had gone to bed, but I don't, I think we- No, don't worry. It, it, it was crazy. Happened, it was it, nuts. I, it, was it was crazy. And, so and, yes is the answer. I have been to yes. that part. Uh, oh, no. You know what? That's not- uh, But I wouldn't call it a loser museum. No, uh, that is not the apartment I was thinking okay, of. Okay, no, uh, then I haven't been to it. It was the museum. one with uh, Bob Wilson, Matt Graham, myself, uh, and then I can't remember who else was in the corner. It was I in, in the projects believe. in Kendall Square and it was all the roaches. I don't believe I'd been to the Kendall Square yeah. one. So My point anyway, is, so. I was, I was at the end of your tether. Yes, and uh, and then you said there's an opportunity for a uh, to staff as a writer on the Ben Stiller show, um, and I, I was also very, um, and I, I regret this, and I'm embarrassed by it. But my attitude was so annoying and obnoxious with this idea of like, I don't know, man, TV, parody, right, right. that's not my bag, man. I'm about telling the truth or, you know, I'm doing a... a Except for a, SCTV, um, which you would never badmouth SCTV. No, I wouldn't. Uh, it, and also I was like... It was it was just obnoxious and, uh, and you know, like, uh, what, what, you know, I was like 20... It was so, just, it's, it's just, just a young this, person's It's a young person's thing. thing. Yes, I, I was, all I was missing was a clove cigarette and a beret and, uh, <laughs> and I, you know, but I was like, I don't know, man. And of course, who was I fucking kidding? I was, <laughs> it was the greatest opportunity that I ever had and I'm here now because of that, uh... You know, it all extends from that. So you, so I wrote some, I, I threw some uh, cross comedy sketches in uh, a packet, sent them to you. You gave them to Ben and Judd. And then next thing I knew, I was, you know, like- Being can, flown yeah. to- uh, No, no, they didn't pay for that. No, uh, I know. But it was a, <laughs> I drove a lot cross country. for you. I, uh, I actually drove from Texas to Los Angeles too. But I really admire that you did that because that's actually quite frightening. And I remember thinking that at the time, like, can you just be here now? You know yeah, what I mean? It was... Give up. Every, everything's got to change. Uh, you've got to get here on your own, and then we're just going to start. Yeah. And I, I was like, I, I feel like 
I wouldn't have had the the chutzpah to do that back then. I would have been so anxiety ridden that I was to no thanks. I mean, I was, but I was really. I mean, I was. It was also. Um, it was also October uh, in Boston, so think the seasons were were. It was starting to get colder. I know what the winter's like in Boston. We didn't have heat. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, open the oven door and, and and crank up the heat and just like sitting in, you know, two pairs of socks and two pairs of sweats. Like, am I going to do this again? Uh, because of this idea of purity with cross comedy, my sketch group uh-huh. that's, uh, you know, and and it was, you know, ridiculous uh, backwards regressive way of thinking. But uh, uh I ended so I flew out and um and then Judd gave me like an extra day off or something so that I I left everything in Boston flew out started working on the show and then had I think it was 5 days to fly back to Boston get my car loaded up with whatever will fit my car gave everything else away and literally just uh my Chevy Malibu that my mm-hmm. grandmom gave me uh that was her old car and I drove it in three and a half days from Boston, door to door, to L.A., three and a half days, got back into work. Uh, I met, I'm, I'm going to forget his name, uh, uh, it's Bob... O- o- George o- Burns? O- no, no, it was uh, Bob o- 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 Derv. Uh Oh, okay, because George Burns' office was below the offices, if oh, that's you may right. recall, and he would go there every day still. Um, do you remember Rip Taylor being on the show? And I how do, we of course all... I do. <laughs> But you're, uh, you're thinking of Bob, Bob, uh, Bob, oh, oh. Yeah, God, I get I it wrong every time. Oakland, I don't know what Oakland. ever happened to him. He seemed really funny. Um, Bob Odin. He went, he went the dramatic route. He, Bill Odin. 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 O- Oakland Durf. Oakland, Oakland Dorf. Dur- Oakland Dorf. Ba- Durf back Durf. Oakland. Wait, I'm confusing. Uh, uh, Durf back Durf. Oakley, guy, Oakley. My friend Dahmer. Um, um no. Graphic it's... novel. Uh, but he was a Saul. Saul, he played Saul, 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 Saul Goldman. Saul, Saul Goldman. Saul, Saul on Better Better Call Saul. That guy, right? Yeah, best to call Saul. Best best to call Saul. You best be calling It'll Saul. It'll behoove you. <laughs> and yeah, that guy. He was a uh, always liked him. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a good, he's good, he went good, he went good dramatic. Egg. He good went uh, yeah. But I think he, he was into that purity thing too. Nobody ever heard from him again. Yeah. But Bob Odenkirk, that's his name. No, no, no. Mm. Uh, Nicole, look up. Uh, what, who's the guy that, that we Bob all Odenkirk. we all hung out with? He had so much potential. <laughs> um, and I remember it was a kind of thing where, uh, and I still had no money. I still have this kind of, um, as as my mother in law calls, poverty mentality because I grew up really poor and I was poor, but I was poor because of me. I'm not saying mm-hmm. any, you know, not when I was a kid, obviously, but later. Um, uh, you know, and I'd go home, I'd have my backpack, and before I'd go home, I'd be stocking up water and oh, Fritos, the craft services, yeah. paper plates. Let me get all my paper plates. Absolutely. Uh, but, I mean, p- toilet paper. But put it in there. Put it in there. But you that's know? the beauty of having a back. For years, I did that. It is still oh, yeah. hard for me to resist at Union Hall in the Bell House. <laughs> the wagon <laughs> wheel the toilet paper. Thing. It is just this instinct of, it's there. You know, uh, you want to know what I did? Or bounty paper towels. Listen, mm-hmm. I did... It was one of those festivals. It was in L.A. and it was either Fuck Yeah Fest or Fun or the Fun Riot Fun. One, the which one? Was it the L.A. Riot? The one downtown? No, Never no, no, no. It was. This is a long time ago, and I, I know I was living there because I had a car, or I was uh, maybe I was shooting Arrested or something. But I was th- staying there. But um, I was in the production office getting my paycheck, and they had a. It was last night, and they had a big, big. Uh, think of uh, snacks, like the individual snacks. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like, you know, 75, like a big yeah. thing. And I was like, what are you guys going to do with that sna- those snacks? And they're like, because they were all packing stuff up. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we're probably just going to get rid of them. I was like, oh, I'll take them. And I put them all in a black trash bag. Mm-hmm. I have money at this point. But and, no, and it's, it's in my why, car. Why it was in my it car be for a fucking month. And I would just drive and if I had and to go snack. to set, and I would just grab some Fritos. Like, but, don't throw them away. I'll also, take them. Sometimes when you're uh, somewhere on location, uh, the bottled water is essential. So from craft service, and they yeah. have it. And there is reusable water too. But it's if they have it, it's like the, in the, if you're staying at a hotel or something, the cost on principle, yes, I can't absolutely. bear. 
Well, yeah, let me say, what, what was the thing uh, when we were working on in, uh, in uh, uh, not Tal, whatever, uh, White, White Sands, New Mexico, uh, and we worked on that oh, pilot. Uh, what, the one in Wilmington, Wilmington, Delaware? I'm confusing No, uh, wasn't it White Sands? Was it, was it, it was where are you talking about Beat the Rain? Yeah. That, that pilot, Beat the Rain? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I think that was Wilmington, Delaware. I could be wrong. Oh my God! I thought it. Well, that's completely. No, wrong. go ahead. You may be right. I I often. I am mean, wrong. one's a desert and one's a. I I may be confusing two things, but but you and I have done more than one pilot together. Yes, that we've has done not plenty of. But this, stuff. so I think, t- tell about the, you're thinking of the other one. I'm thinking of a different one. <laughs> okay. So the one in. The, I'm, the it, desert. Yeah, it was beat the rain. Beat the rain, right? The one I'm thinking in the of. The desert. Uh, right. Beat the rain. That uh, what's his face. Um, Who's the disgraced director? Just just apl- uh, moved to Israel. Uh, Brett Ratner was a producer uh-huh. on it. Um, yeah, about the uh, the uh, husband and wife poker professional poker players, and then they hook up. Uh, they're going to Reno or wherever the, it is, and well, they're on their way driving. What I remember is how many names there was for it. It was Beat the Rain ultimately, but mm-hmm. there was at once it was called Shot and Reno. Mm-hmm. There was one that was called Deal. Mm-hmm. I think, or just deal, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, just glad, deal with it. Uh, no, no, just, just, just deal. deal. Just if deal. it had been a sitcom, it would have been just deal with right, it. Right, right, right. Um, but I think um, dealers. Choice? And then I think it was going to be called River, like that, which has right. to do with poker but, and, and water and and water. But I think Beat the Rain was an interesting yeah, title. That's I'm a, glad it's the best of it. one. It's the best of it. Um, of and those. there was a, a couple directors. Mm-hmm. Uh, one I think was Kinka Usher who went on. He did Mystery mm-hmm. Men and also he did the Taco mm-hmm. Bell commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think one might have been a wonderful, wonderful director named Jenna Ricker who I went on to work with again. So she's wonderful. Um, did a movie about Nikola Tesla with her, but uh, that was an interesting. Now I think the two of us were stocking up on craft <laughs> service. Oh yeah, uh, and both I mean, realized I that our kinship on that like even though we had known each other for a long time the fact that we both in fact on the larry sanders show my nickname given to me by jeremy piven was snack time because i was always Mm -hmm. filling my backpack with snacks to take from the craft service but anyway back to beat the rain that was a production rife with issues well the fact that they uh they had to replace the uh uh real shaman that that they they were insistent on hiring a real like uh, shaman indian right, rain but it dancer wasn't, it wasn't a union it had, i think it was a union issue which is strange because i don't i know that sounds really? crazy what i'm saying union yeah but there's he was a union going to for be a, rain dancers? no there isn't a yeah. union for shaman but, real shaman right but as it happened i think they needed to have union people working on the production uh Something that's what I had heard. Yeah, but I was thinking of the act, like so they they hired a real rain dancer to p- portray a real rain dancer. It was a, oh, it was I a, thought there was an issue with the, the well, there, there is there no union, things. and the, so there was an issue where well they had to keep hiring the person as a day player, which was mm-hmm. a lot more paperwork. But yeah, again, but I then don't... they they fired the uh, I, I you know they creatively fired the. Um, the real rain dancer, uh, because uh, he was also uh, giving B twelve shots to uh, the the extras or the background players. And why is so? What's wrong with that? This is back back before that. that I, would I mean, be I don't think you're allowed to. I don't think you're allowed to. would get B twelve shots. Well, I don't. The right pack would get okay, B twelve shots. I don't think shots. you're allowed to do it just on your own. You can't just bring a bunch of syringes and B twelve. Consenting adult. I had no idea. I did. I didn't know that was happening. I certainly yeah, so would have. He was giving B twelve shots, in. and uh, apparently, uh, unbeknownst to him, he gave a shot to uh, one of the producer's dogs. Uh, what? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why and, would you do that? I don't know. Why would you be a rain dancing shaman? I don't know. Le- There's many reasons to be a rain dancing shaman. Name, name seventeen. Uh, apparently, you get name seventeen. Well, number one. There's movie roles to be had, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, um, there's there's value, I suppose, in these rituals. It's part of the human condition to like ritual, whatever. Uh, but when you mention a dog, now I got to take issue. Okay. Because uh, I, the animal cannot advocate for itself. It is I'm not with in you, any need. Totally. No, no, I know you're not arguing for oh, it. God, yeah. I didn't know about you that. Can't, I didn't you know can't about that at the time, and I'm glad I didn't know about that. Animals B12 shots. Well, I'm you sure know? you can, you but you, nor right. should you. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know why you would. 
Right. Unless he, unless the animal was sluggish, was it somebody's dog? Was it a working dog on set? It was, was a it just producer. A dog? No, it was a producer's. But dog. it was just dog, just on the set. It yeah, wasn't, no, it wasn't, wasn't like a. a well, part that's of the thing. that's a that's I don't like the sound of and that. And then and then they they were not allowed uh, mm -hmm. to put in the at the end of the credit roll. No animals were harmed during the filming of well, Beat the Rain. They shouldn't be, and I'm I'm sure they stick that tag on. Listen, I've worked on many productions over the years where there are animals involved mm -hmm. and they're not quote unquote hurt, but they are put to work in a way I don't think they've signed up for. I don't like the way a lot of the handlers who are making a lot of money off their, mainly dogs I've worked with on mm -hmm. a number of productions. Uh, I don't like it. You know what I mean? And and you, all you're making this dog do is command, sit, sit work over and over all day Janine, and then there was Janine, one where Janine, they made the dog Janine, poop on command Janine, what dogs don't a uh, dog dogs are feeling sentient creatures that are not they don't say i'd like to go to work it's like a child hector you no. know what i mean um but uh the dog is getting treats that too many treats not that, to that you the can dog. overfeed the dog, dog. Dog doesn't. But I do feel like a lot. Of, there would be. There was one movie I did, a Lifetime movie called "Girl's Best Friend," where there's dogs, and uh, the dog would fall asleep in my arms routinely. That's how exhausted it was. And I would always say, "Please, just let it sleep. We mm -hmm. can just use the takes where it's sleeping, please." No, but we want it to do this cute thing where it reacts. Now that's a sign of a horrible film when you want the dog to react and to an, something and someone a, and said. And a completely Especially unethical actress trailer. who's not who's allowing that to happen and not. I, Tried so hard, David. Then on... you quit in a in a. And you... I didn't. No, we're. Ta I'm not talking about beat the rain. Then I you beat. Quit. Then you. I, then I you bring a, a gun to set. Friend. Bring a gun uh, to go set. Go to YouTube. It's on Lifetime. Uh, I'm sure I've done an oxygen movie and a Lifetime movie. I don't think either one is able to be seen, but the YouTube I hear is very good. But I anyway, what I'm saying is, whenever I've worked with animals, I am their uh, biggest advocate. Honestly, now beat the rain. I, I didn't know about this dog. And I'm very, I well, wish that, I had. It wasn't an acting dog. It was a, No, no, uh, I know. Offset, it yeah. doesn't matter if it was an acting. That makes it even worse. Yeah. So it didn't need a B12 shot. No. But. Pro I don't, um, you know. So I mean, that, was that, so that, you keep calling it a rain maker. I'm sure there's more professional name for it. The, sh the shaman. Um, I mean, I'm saying that out to, of, I mean, that's what, uh, even in the, the, what do you call it? The, the, the cast list. It the, was. The breakdown sheet or like the. You know, the. The call sheet. Call sheet. It's a, uh, you know, rain dancer, shaman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was their, I, I, you know, I don't. I didn't have any scenes something. with the, the particular rain dancer, shaman. No, but... I didn't either. I mean, I was just, uh, it was uh, the thing at the gas station where the couple broke down and, uh, you know, I, I played the, you know, whatever, toothless, you know, hillbilly, but mm -hmm. desert version of And of course, I was the friend of the main girl. I know. So, because for... Aesthetic reasons. <laughs> no, but you were you were the quirky, fun. I was the uh, I was the uh, I was the uh, like friend the... who just uh, was uh, supposed to throw in cynical bon mots and was terse, which I can't stand. I yeah. can't stand that. And I can't stand well, that. That, was... that happened to me all the time. That pigeonholing. It's not interesting to play, nor is mm -hmm. it interesting to watch. And it's it's a. Uh, I will say this though: you are good at it. So I actually don't know if that's true, but it's a, it's a, well, I the think... test, no, the results came back. It is oh, true. Okay. Yeah. You got a 79. Oh, that's what we did with the up our nose? Yep. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. COVID beat... is short for. Beat the rain. I, I've never seen it, by the way, in PS. I never saw it. No. Oh, I saw when I, when I was doing ADR, I saw some of it, but. Oh, the looping stuff. Yeah. 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 But that's, I've not seen. And I don't even know if it's still called Beat the Rain. I have no idea. And, uh, and. Uh, Will Patton was in it. I love Will Patton. Yeah, I desperately yep, see cool. Susan in a million cool. other things. I love him. Um, and, and also, I don't know if you know this, a uh, young, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, young Rachel Brosnahan. Is that correct? Oh, could be. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, wow. A yeah. very young Rachel yeah, yeah, yeah. Brosnahan then. Uh, Might have been her first thing. Uh, but. Uh, also Kristen Minter. Um I think uh, Rob Cohen was one of the writers on it, but there's 800 Rob Cohens. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about the one that also wrote for the Stiller Show. Yes, uh, Towering Disaster. Towering Disaster, yeah. right? Which say. is is still out there. Uh, it's it's a, percolating. People have it. People. It's, it's a. It's just a shame that the further we get away from Irwin Allen, yeah. the the harder it is I, we're going to come back around. Disaster. We're coming back. I around. still think Towering Inferno is one of the good. It's great. Oh yeah, I love it. 
Oh, with it's, Fred Astaire's it's, tying himself up. It's half Towering Inferno, half Poseidon Adventure. I know. A little bit the of Earthquake disaster. and a little bit of Swarm. The Christmas tree turns over upside right. down. I remember right. it. I'm not kidding, though. We are. That no, no, I, I, I believe ben, you. Ben, uh, I don't remember how it came up. This is like back during COVID. Oh, I know what it was. We did a reading on uh, Zoom. We did like a celebrity mm-hmm. reading of it for charity. Mm-hmm. And, and then we all were like, Hey, this is actually pretty good. And yeah. then Ben and Red Hour, his production company, were like, "Yeah, we should get this." And then Rob and I took it and then kind of cleaned it up and spruced it up and punched it up. And then we took it out and it just has every single thing has to be spot on about something like that to truly, truly be the best it can be. Um, okay, so we're back to the five oh, senses. We're gonna. We're gonna I feel to, like we've been talking forever. We have. That's the point. Oh my of this. gosh! I know. That's the point. You know. Uh, quite often I'll be either, uh, at a graveyard or a bar and people will come up to me and say, Hey man, what is HelloFresh? Well, with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. (laughs) Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Don't let recipe boredom strike because HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. You know, like chickpeas. You know how that's a lifestyle. And (laughs) does your lifestyle include black olives? We got them. Make saving time your breeziest resolution with quick, convenient recipes delivered right to you. You know, folks, the ancient Egyptians said breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees with those ancient Egyptians. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life? That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now, that's worth waking up early for! Go to HelloFresh.com slash censusfree and use code censusfree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash censusfree with code censusfree. We're so at an listen, hour. See what listen. I like Carl Perry yelled at me for being <laughs> chatty? Well, that's what the nature of what you're supposed to do here. Right, it's a podcast. Yeah. Just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a talking. So I, I want to, uh, there's two things. One yes. thing I want to bring up. Another thing is a, is a, a brief little segment that I want to get to. Um, which is a question from my daughter uh, yes. for you. Um, I want to have your reaction to this uh, on tape or uh, whatever. I uh, one of the many, many, many times that we were have done shows together. Uh, we were at Caveat, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, Lower East Side, and just uh, and you're going to hate this because it it is it's i'm talking positively about you <laughs> it makes me very uncomfortable I'm, as I'm, you aware. Know. I'm already uh, now my shoulders just went up <laughs> no but i uh and i said to you in all earnestness and i could see it as i was uh-huh. watching i was like i would like to do uh a, an as unobtrusive documentary about you and just stand up and you were like abs- adamant absolutely not right. no Right, absolutely. Yeah, right. so I still feel the same. And I actually, I, and then I, call, I, I and then appreciate I tr- that you say that, but I, I can't think of uh, something that. Uh, oh my gosh, no! And, and no one would ever want to see it. No, that, that's not. That's not true. No. And that's not. Uh, let, let's let's not get the cart before the horse. The idea Let, is, please, it won't work. <laughs> okay, I would like to prove you wrong, and I, and then I contacted you like after you had said no 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 Uh i was like listen i've really been thinking about it this is how to do it uh it will be as uh, minimally invasive invasive as possible is this all what that's about is this actually fake (laughs) this is are we actually doing the the documentary (laughs) right now uh i think it would be and and you know what uh also this is before that new york times article came out and then when the new york times article came out i was like god damn it why won't you let me just at least get some shows because what you do 
is is uh you're you're extremely extemporaneous and it's the writing is on stage and it's performative and it doesn't matter if the audience is uh, with you or not it doesn't matter how much energy no it, that's a good thing like I mean, it matters to me but i can't control it it it, right. it, it, it upsets me when they're not in but you're st- but. What, what the point i'm making is you're still a uh fast brilliant uh comic and uh and y- you're not you're not one of those like oh i love to watch some like people used to love to watch me bomb right because then i would get a, a certain mm-hmm. way and uh you're not that that's not the kind of comic i'm talking about you're just still you're always kind of the same thing you're always you know um uh, quick and uh, the only thing I, I would be open to is if you and i were doing shows together and somebody was filming it but that it then i in no way was the focus of it but that it would be uh because you do stand up in a similar way. I mean, yeah. you actually are yeah. much more of a writer, a disciplined writer. I know that. But also, uh, how many kind of comedy things can people like? There can't be any more books about stand up or oral histories. Or yeah, I and, mean, I, I and so I, that's many not films what this, about stand up. Uh, I would, I would first and foremost, uh, the building block of this whole thing. The reason is you're unique. You, there's nobody quite like you in the in the stand up world. There there you've influenced people and there are people and you could see it, but there's nobody like you. And if you were even if you're uh concerned about the impression uh, it leaves while you're watching it, after you've watched it, you would have to trust the I mean obviously you'd have final say and everything, but you would have to trust that, hey, if we just shoot for, you know, 32 hours worth of stuff over a year. Um, but isn't that I, just like doing a special? Because also... No, no, it is not. The no, thing it is, is not. Is no, it, it is not. It's, it's not. The implication would be that I think it's a good idea, which I... No, I, which, I mean, which this would be... Janine, I would sit there... We, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... You know me. I'm yeah. not going to do a straight ahead thing. It could all be bookended with just you going, I don't want to do this. I'm not... Right, gonna. but then nobody would believe they'd say, but then why are you doing it? You know what I mean? Like the, it's, Well, then this conversation will be part of it. Right, but it's still... Would but yet it still exists, and also you're, I'd you're never be able to have final say because I would never be able to watch it for editing. <laughs> never, I've not. I couldn't possibly watch or listen to. Well, myself. then you'd have to trust me, your uh, dear no, no, old I, friend. I would, but the thing is, is I I really feel like I don't want to have a conversation with you after where you say, I guess you were right. This you wouldn't. It wasn't. It wasn't that we didn't have that. It will. Janine, it will be heartbreaking Janine, to to be proved correct. Don't don't negate something. Because you think it's going to be bad. Because I'm telling you, I think it will be good. I think, I and I think it would be it. Uh, 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 intriguing and worthwhile and beneficial to thousands and thousands of women, girls, com- want to be comedians, writers. Right, but I don't put a gender on it. That's that's another thing. Like, there's there's no difference between the gender. And I don't consider... Like I, I don't right, know well, why maybe that still was me. people uh, Maybe say, I was trying to appeal to that, uh, you know, I shouldn't have done that and appealed to No, 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 that's something. okay. It's just that I, I there's the nothing way, that Amber really says, is Amber gender specific hi. to really what I do. Because also just- uh, are, you, are, you, are you not aware or are you denying that you're not a hero to some girls or I, women? Uh, there may be uh, certainly- uh, There are. Every comic has- There, there, there have are. been very nice- uh, Com, you know, Bonnie McFarlane and Jesse Klein and uh, have mentioned that. Yeah, I, I am. I'm aware of that, and I'm thrilled. I don't know why it is that they are like that, but and then well, what did they say? I think part of it. No, no, I haven't said why. The I think part of it for some people back in the '90s was uh, even though there were a lot of people dressing like you and I did, there wasn't a lot of people dressing like you and I did on Evening at the Improv or on televised. Right. Comedy segments. I think that actually was a, a more powerful uh, thing I mean, that that, ins- that that reached some people was uh, this person looks different than Rita Rudner or right. or uh, even, you know, people that were d- well-dressed 
or had an outfit they wore mm -hmm. when they were on a talk show doing stand up. It was it was part and parcel of uh, the the kind of new our our delivery was different, our attitude was mm -hmm. different, our uh, that was expressed but it wasn't somewhat on in the purpose, clothes. It's just sort of the way uh, well, that's, we were we were. That's what people liked and that's what people gravitated right, towards and I that's why this movement uh, uh, that wasn't ever uh, calculated or mm -hmm. um, uh, you know we it wasn't like organized but that's what happened and mm -hmm. people were like oh do you do you remember when um, I was visiting you in Houston and, and we both got fired and we both from went, that comedy place yeah because the Hyatt. Of, uh, oh no 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 uh, oh, but we that, both did get fired from the Hyatt yes I got fired from the Hyatt as did I we were both on the same show we were? Yes. Oh, shit. I don't... I met... That and was you were staying the... with me in Houston, and we were both at, at that Hyatt. Yeah, they did or, not like or us. Or you were perhaps doing a guess... Whatever it was, I was... No, at... I got... I did the Hyatt somewhere and got oh, okay. fired well, from that. Well, we were both fired on the same night from... By the same place. Well, that's not what I was... I was thinking of the... What was the great legendary comedy club in Houston? Oh, the Comedy Workshop. Comedy Workshop. We went there. You brought me as a guest. Mm -hmm. You're very, you know... Uh, uh, and and you were ascending, and everybody was like, "Oh, Janine's here," and you're like, "This is my friend, David Cross. He's he's really good." Can we? Yeah, and I was like, and the owners, the husband and wife, the Menzels, the Menzels, Sharon and, and I forget his name. Uh, they both. Uh, I'm going to use the phrase "dressed me down" uh, because of my outfit, <laughs> which was like shorts. That's odd. Or or torn jeans. Oh yeah, I remember it very well, I and don't uh, that. it was disrespectful to the audience because I was wearing like a bowling shirt. Was it a, a weekend? Um, I don't remember. Because that's remember. odd because there was a lot of informal dressers uh, at the country kind of workshop was actually pretty good. Oh, I I was and uh, yeah, and I don't it was remember. hot as balls in Houston, but that they did that. Uh, I don't know what in the world. That's crazy. Because also, they yeah. could have said that to a number of comedians who work there. And they... didn't. I'm very sorry that happened. Well, it wasn't, it, you know, it was um, more Fuck of a them. disappointment and like a... You know, because they must have taken it personally of their club. Like somehow it was, it they was, think Well, that's that, what it was. The idea was I was being disrespectful to, to the audience. And... That, well, also... Uh, Menzel, the the man, I, I I forget. He was actually in terms of endearment. He played the doctor in terms of endearment. Um, I can remember him saying to me, um, and they were very supportive of me. But when uh, there there was a acting course offered mm -hmm. through them, they were getting some money for it, like when they were offering it. And I remember thinking, should I take this? And he said, I don't know. I. I the way you look and stuff, you're not going to get it. He was, he didn't know he, it's mm -hmm. unkind to say such a thing. Uh, he was, he, to him, he was being a robot. saving me some time, wasting yeah. time. And he, he's just like, uh, it, because also I, back, this is before empowerment. Do you mm -hmm. remember that, Dave? There was no such thing as empowerment. I've heard of uh, it. My there, wife there, is, has uh, t shirts ladies, with that word on it. You were not blessed with curves. You were not plus sized. You were not big, beautiful. You were not zofty. You, you either thin or you were fat. That and that's I that's like the way to say it is. Rubenesque. And there was a just uh, and people were very blunt in those days, much more blunt. No fat chicks. No fat chicks. The bumper sticker. Yeah. Although that does make me laugh. I have to say. <laughs> that bumper sticker makes me laugh. Uh, it always did from the seventies straight. Now it's like Cheez Its. I never tire of Cheez Its. They're always good. Um, the, the so he said, and just very in that way you. Pragmatically, you know, don't don't you you, you know you you're overweight. Uh, you're not you know particularly. And he was being just being himself. Oh, and, wow. and he's like, I, I just don't overweight. think it That's would. That's so it crazy. Would. That and and he was willing to lose money, kickback money, to say yeah. that. So I think he thought he was being quite helpful. And as mm. I said, they gave me a lot of stage time. Uh, well, there, the club and I is always legendary, enjoyed so. the comedy workshop, the comedy annex, yeah. um, a fantastic venue. Very, very sad to have lost that, and a lot of great comics worked there. Yeah. And there was open seven nights, and it and it accidentally curated a very good audience because there actually were very thoughtful, good comics. And you know, when you were talking about that movement, or like more. Less jokey, more talky. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. It has always and existed. Personal. And personal. And personal. It has always existed. It's just that it was harder to see them uh, over the years. It existed in San Francisco. Yeah. Mort Saul, in a way, did it. Mm -hmm. But the uh, this is it, uh, something I, I 
I discovered listening to audio cassettes of Patti Smith, mm-hmm. the singer, the wonderful singer Patti Smith, speaking Not Patty at Smith. a gallery open for her friend, uh, uh, Ma- Ma- the photographer, is it Ma- her former roommate, uh, the, the photographer that she lived with. Who? Uh, oh, Patty, Patty Smith? Smith. Oh, Robert Mapplethorpe. Robert Mapplethorpe. Yeah. And she was doing what we would call, quote unquote, alternative comedy. And I mm-hmm. don't call it that. You don't call it that. It was just called that. She's hilarious. She's like speaking mm-hmm. and saying personal funny stories. She's doing that. She's like at doing Luna Lounge. It's like right. 1973. And I'm like, maybe we should say Patti Smith has originated this style. But it sure. it exists if that's who you are. It's always existed. I, I, yes. It, it, and I think part of the reason it was, um, it's as definitive as it became was you've you got to remember the context that when it was uh starting uh stand-up was at its apex it was the comedy boom and mm-hmm. it was suddenly within a year two years tops everywhere right and it was all over the tv in which in ways mm-hmm. it was only on the tonight show or right. uh you know the well, just Donnie the late night show talk whatever. shows and then a handful of other ways but, but there were only one late right. night well, I, was, I know I mean, there, there was there always was local in in local town boston had one their local stand-up shows and uh toronto well, had one most, even in the 70s and stuff but i know what you're saying mostly they i take didn't. your point and and uh it was hard to see stand-up. And there were only a handful of places where you'd go to see stand-up. Right. And then all of a sudden, again, within a year or two. Chains. I mean, there was uh, exponentially like 10 times as many right. venues. And so the people that were like, hey, I can make money doing this, who weren't very good, uh, all aped the style of the, mm-hmm. you know, the blazer with the rolled up sleeves right. and the skinny tie. and Also, the... unfortunately, there was pressure to do that by TV people. Like, or yeah, producers yeah, yeah, or yeah, people. No, I, I mean, so, yeah, that's was... all part of it. But mm-hmm. that, so that's why somebody like yourself or, you know, Marin or me or all the, all our friends from that scene, you know, uh, uh, Louie and Laura and, and all the people, right. you know, <clears throat> uh, stood out. And we, Paula Poundstone would do very, yeah, very personal. Type. Absolutely. I would go see her night after night. Yeah. And and of course, George Carlin, but he was, as I discovered, very written. I didn't oh, know he, that. Very uh, But I would watch him workshop yeah. shows and yeah. I, I realized, oh, he's, yeah. every word is yeah. is honed, but he's making it seem. Um, Janine, I have got to go because so, I'm, I'm, I got to relieve the. I'm, I'm just going to hang out here. Yeah, you because can, I have but I got to go. I'm going to knock out a bunch of voiceover stuff. Okay. But I have a question. Uh, I ask each my each of my guests well, a question. Well, get to, get to, let me get a word in edgewise here. It's a question from my daughter. Yes. Uh, and I'm going to, she has a couple here. I'm going to, um, I asked her, uh, <laughs> so this is a question I'm going to ask you. Does sweat clean pennies? Oh, that is actually a good question. In so far as perhaps enzymatically it might. Um, does she ask that because of experience? Like uh, in her hands, like pennies and because pennies yeah, she, are very she, dirty. Yes, uh, and she knows that, and she certainly knows that a uh, New York City penny is probably one of the dirtiest things on the planet. And uh, but she uh, learned the idea, the concept of a lucky penny. Find a penny, pick it right. up, and all the day up. Good luck. So she wants to pick up. Get pennies for Wait, well, good she, luck. You should pick them up and then sanitize them. I think the, the question remains: Does the sweat, sweat I, clean I would pennies? Say in answer, if she's saying, "Will the sweat in my hand when I pick it up from the street clean it?" I would say no. That because there's just bacteria upon bacteria. If you could isolate sweat, maybe because sweat is a way of your pores cleansing themselves. So I understand where she's going, but I I would well, say it's, no. It's a way to cool yourself down too. But also, she should be on the lookout for what are called wheat pennies. Um, honestly, I save them. Yeah. My mother saved them, and I collect them. Uh, they stopped making pennies. wheat pennies probably in around 1952, or because of celiac disease. That's not true. They just changed the back of it. There's no longer stalks of wheat. They just changed what the penny looks like because of celiac disease. It's gluten free. It's a gluten free penny. The gluten, the gluten, uh, the gluten Michigas wasn't mm-hmm. in play. But they, uh, but if you, if she finds wheat pennies, and you still can. And I have some from 1927. I literally that I will get 
Um, and on any given day, they're still, and I like to imagine the journey that pennies went on, but I've got wheat pennies from like the 1920s, the 30s, the 40s, and then they end around 19, maybe 58's the last time. But the back of the penny will look different, and she, they're just something to collect, and uh, some of them are worth a great yeah. deal of money. Yeah. Uh, Janine Garofalo, thank you so Dave much, Cross, my dear you. old friend. Thank you. It was a pleasure, and I can't, this seat is good. John yeah. Hodgman was correct, the swivel seat. Is a great choice for those coming. I'll have to try it someday. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>